What's up, guys? Welcome back. My name is Jeff. I'm the owner of RDR Gear in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you don't know what we do at RDR, you can find a couple of different ways. One, our Instagram page, Facebook, this YouTube channel. And if you do watch this video, hit that subscribe button. It helps a lot and helps me keep Crispy employed. <laughs> so today we're doing a little different. I got my buddy Chris. Chris is the owner of Odyssey Training here in Salt Lake City. And we got spring coming, summer's coming, and we're going to talk today about one, Chris's company, two, the topic of investment training or travel training. So Chris, why don't you tell these fine folks at home sure, a little guys. about yourself. Uh, my name is Chris Cook. I run a training, uh, training company called Odyssey Training and Consulting here in the Salt Lake City Valley. Uh, we've been out training uh, just over three years now. Okay. And a little bit about me and my background. Uh, I've been a serious student of self-defense and shooting performance for right at 10 years now. Training with you know a lot of people at the national level. I used to compete a long time ago. I never won anything. But yeah, my, my mainstay is handgun shooting and, and a lot of the oddball specific self-defense stuff that everyday people interact with a little bit more. That's kind of my my focus and specialty. Where do you have, where do you do your classes at for like the, the pepper spray and all the self-defense sure. yeah. stuff? Uh, so I teach at TNT Guns and Range in Murray. I also teach at a couple of other indoor ranges around the valley, a couple different specialty coursework classes that I kind of travel around and teach. And then I also teach a lot of the full live fire classes and stuff like that at the Farm Training Center down in Fairfield. So the reason why I wanted you guys to kind of, especially this is something I get a lot here in the valley for, people are looking for training and not only are you looking at a first time shooter or someone who's new, Chris's classes are structured for somebody who's new as well intermediate to advanced. I think um, a lot of times people, oh, I don't need a refresher. I don't need like the basic, yeah. you know, brush up. I think everybody, I do it too, because I think there's always something you can learn from somebody regardless of, you know, their Instagram profile or their GWAT life or whatever case may be. There's a way to brush up skill sets and take little nuggets to help scale personal training. Utah, in your opinion mm -hmm. as well, we're pretty deficient on farm training. Unfortunately, we, yes. We, we got a shit ton of land, <laughs> right? And we got very few places that are organized, structured ranges. We got a lot of gun owners and we yeah. got a lot of shooting going on, but, exactly. uh, but the training aspect is... Like is California has way more places as far as organized firearms locations, ranges, yep. etc. So here I think we get kind of shorted on instructors. Everybody wants to be an NRA instructor. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of NRA, you know, four hour permit things, whatever. But just because you went to an NRA and permit class doesn't mean you understand the EDC yeah. line. Yeah, uh, you see a lot of people out there that, you know, they're, they're teaching everything that they know. Yes. Um, and what they know is the NRA's course yes. or some other certification. And that's really their only background into this very big, very complex world. There's a yeah. lot to know. Um, so you don't have people with really that much background or that much depth, and they're trying to teach yes. to, the, to the maximum level that they can get away with. Exactly. Um, I, so it's kind of tough. Yeah, and I think you know the big hot topic is, oh, background on Instagram. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, you have a background. I don't think it's background so much to say is that you have to train within your lane, so to speak. Mm -hmm or you have to be able to communicate. Like when I, you and I talk, you know, there's a very, we connect a lot of different things, you know, with lights on handguns, red mm -hmm. dot, you know, all kind of stuff, pocket lights. But like you and S Scott, what's Scott's last name? Is it Edward? Gar Scott Garcia, uh, Advent uh, Training? Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, you and Scott, I, I've both, I've met Scott long ago in a mm -hmm. class. I think that's a great thing about going to classes, you meet other dudes. Mm -hmm. But also- he's a, he's a squared away shooter. Yeah. He can, yep. he can run the gun pretty and, well. And you guys both are, I don't want to use the word simple as in a negative way, but you, your approach to finding and helping students is scaling fundamental baseline skill set. Mm -hmm. It's not cash grab where you get your plate carrier on, your helmet, and your carbine, and you're going to go do a vehicle class or some kind of. I CQB. mean, I want to. Oh yeah, that's fun. Yeah, <laughs> but I think when people, I think what happens too as an instructor, I feel there's some kind of maybe big brother approach to like, hey man, all this over here is cool, but we got to start here to get to here. Yeah, I mean, you know, we look at, you know, is this is this something that's real for the student? Is this something that they're trying to do as an actual skill set to help keep themselves and their family safe in the, the actual threats that they might face? Um, there is a kind of an element of fun factor to this, sure. which is I like shooting guns and I like yeah. being around cool people and all that kind of stuff, but we can't do that at the expense of 
the actual real things that yes. we need to know. So like, you know, for example, in my pistol foundations class, this is kind of controversial. We don't cover reloads in pistol foundation. And um, when you look at the data on civilian self-defense shootings, yeah, knowing the motor skill of reloading a gun from empty under fire is, a, you know, really not a, not a needed skill. No, I agree. Um, drawing the gun quickly, shooting quickly and making decisions under stress with possibly mm -hmm. multiple targets, that's much more likely to be faced. So that's yeah. what we focus I, on. And someone who's pushed back on that, but the same thing, you go to an intermediate advanced class, mm -hmm. I'm not wasting your time talking about double feeds and, and malfunctions. Yeah. If you're not here with that shit squared away, yeah. you probably shouldn't be here. Exactly. You know, I think, and that's where I, I get it, right? Not to go tangent, but you can't just say, hey, dude, you suck. Mm -hmm. Here's your money, go home. Mm -hmm. I do know instructors who, you know, somebody, I, very good friends of mine, but he keeps that wallet, that one envelope of tuition, cash, because he can't let that one person sacrifice the greater of the group, right? Yeah. But it's a, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to, you know, a hard trigger to pull on a student who's traveled, maybe flew in, drove in a long sure. distance, whatever. And it, and that kind of depends on whether you're doing, you know, like people talk about like outcome-based versus performance-based training. Yes. Um, are you here to meet a standard, make a qualification? You've got to pass a test. Yeah. Or are we doing the best we can with your skill sets? Uh, you're probably, maybe your physical disabilities, your age, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Can we get you from A to B? under your own limitations. So, and, yeah. and there's no necessarily right or wrong answer there. There's a place for both types of training. Yes. Uh, people just need to understand what kind of path they're doing. A lot of the military guys are typically very outcome-based, you know? Yes. A lot of qualifications, a lot of tests, a lot of standards, you know, I that kind of also, stuff. I think also, too, so. as a student, you've got you've to put some ownership in yourself. Mm -hmm. You've got to know what you signed up for, and do you have the skill sets to do so. My buddy Chris calls me, uh, Ridgeline, I've been to a class with guys with Alex and Rudy in Florida, and my buddy Chris lives in Rhode Island, and they have a mountain precision course in Rhode Island's facility okay. uh, in New Hampshire. Chris was like, dude, you, I got this new 6.5 behind me, and I haven't, but well, let's take this class. I'm like, dude, I am about to be the guy who rolls out there yeah. and doing a P, basically a PRS class at high From angle. ridge yeah. to ridge, ravine to ravine, no thank you. Yep. I'm not gonna be that guy. Yep. So understanding, you know, myself, like for me, I haven't taken a t anything what I would consider tactical in probably three years, four mm -hmm. years. Everything's been performance based. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of refine skill sets, fundamentals, speed, accuracy. And I was trying to get into matches, you know, and sometimes with this business, of Monday through Friday has some shortage or spillover and Saturday is that makeup day. Yep. So taking time off to go to a match sometimes isn't, isn't precedent where getting orders out and getting stuff done is. So this year I think I'll push more classes and whatnot, but, and I'll also do more matches. I think, sure. you know, I think people have a, I think Lucas is pretty good at talking about it. I th I've heard you mention as well. If you live somewhere and you want to get training and you have the proper equipment, a match is a great place to train, even though it's not some dude, you know, putting you in a line, you're shooting whatever, you can use a match to enhance and apply like the concepts of your pistol fundamentals yeah, class. Yeah, and it's, it's, yeah, I wouldn't know if I would call it training, but it's a great way to test the skills that you've developed okay, that's in fair. training. Um, but it also exposes you to deficiencies. It kind of opens people's eyes to things they haven't been thinking about. A good example I see a lot is things like um, like shooting on the move, target transitions. Mm -hmm. That's all a USPSA match is, is sure, shooting yeah. on the move, target transitions, yeah. right? But so few classes teach those things that when yeah. people go, they might be able to run 22, 23 splits on their trigger on a single target, mm -hmm. but their actual movement and target to target transitions are lacking. So. It's not teaching them how to do that better, but it's exposing, hey, here's what you need to work on, and then they can go work on that outside the match. That's fair. If that makes sense. Yeah, and I think also, too, in like with companies like yourself, that's a good example, because I don't think, we could say that to somebody mm -hmm. in a video, and they wouldn't understand what that actually meant. Sure. Because it, there is, I think that the gaming community is quick to say, oh yeah, we carry guns every day, too, but gaming is our gaming, but there's nobody who's welcoming in at times. It's it's a little bit inclusive. Not it, as inclusive as it should be. It can it, be. It, it, exactly. With I've some seen of the... that very club dependent. You I've think seen, so? I've seen okay. some, I've seen, because I used to compete in, in Texas when I was growing up, and okay. I competed here in, in, in Utah. Um, and club to club, uh, okay. there's a lot of variants, which there probably shouldn't be, right? Agreed. All be as, yeah. as welcoming as possible. Well, I think that's why IDPA died. You know, there's so mm -hmm. many 
old grandpa, you know, mindsets out there, the fishing vest concept, but defensive pistol should be the most modernized format because it technically is designed around the EDC concealed carrier. So you would think that that format would be the most up to date mm -hmm. with the kind of, I don't want to say pushing limits, but it should really be like a penis carrier should be a form Absolutely. in IDPA, but it's Absolutely. not, right? Yeah. But a PCC is, that's where it's like, so it's, for me, it's like, I can't even mess with you guys because you're so backwards, it's almost not worth the time to yeah, join they, that club. they've got some room you know? for improvement so, there. Uh, but yeah. again, nothing really replicates real defensive firearms training. And that was kind of where a lot of the people got away from IDPA was yeah. when they would do things in the name of saying, yeah. hey, you wouldn't reload unless you were behind cover. So it's a procedural <laughs> yeah. to reload. Yeah. Or dumping, dropping the mag on the ground. Or dropping yeah. the mag, you know, yeah. things like that. And it's like, hey, that's a tactic that sometimes might work in certain yeah. situations and sometimes might not. I get yeah. your theory, but penalizing people for certain oddball things that rather than saying, hey, this is sometimes situationally dependent, sometimes it's a good idea, sometimes not, it's your job to pick when. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no ambiguity, there's no decision making there. It's all saying, hey, this is what the rules of the game are. Uh, makes it a little bit more stultifying sure. of, a, of no. a sport. Yeah, no, I agree. So what do you got, uh, what class you got coming up? Uh, so I've got Pistol Foundations on April 16th, uh, March 14th, and June 12th, if I remember the dates correctly. It's one a month, uh, one Saturday a month, Pistol Foundations out of the farm. It's a four-hour training class. If you know how to shoot your firearm, you're not brand new, that's our flagship course. Um, specialty coursework, we've got situational awareness concepts and home defense planning. They're both indoor, uh, interactive, and lecture courses that cover the things that are a little bit more applicable to Joe Schmo not looking for trouble. Uh, how to build a home home defense plan for you okay. and your family. Not just with the gun stuff, okay. fire stuff, home trauma kit stuff. Really, really good class. And then situational awareness concepts, I love to teach that. Um, it's a course on, again, how do, we, how do we notice things going bad before it really gets yes. bad? How do we talk our way out of stuff? If we're lucky enough to see that this is about to go bad, yeah. how do we do things like pepper spray, pro preemptive striking, what get everything that gets up to the fight. No, that, that makes sense. That'd be a cool. I think that's a good one because, you know, like we both like Graham Combat. You know, mm -hmm. we'd all talk about yeah, that yeah, class, yeah. the ripple effect. I haven't heard right? that name in a long time. Yeah, I've been trying to get a class out, dude, for shit like three years. And every time, yeah, yeah. posts sold out. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah. So one day. But I think there's a lot of things that people can do is like simply being aware. Mm. Uh, it's not so much mindset, because I think if you're already being a situation aware of your surroundings, where you're going, what you're doing, where you're parking, your mindset's already a dialed place, mm -hmm. right? But how to apply that stuff and not so much connected to a firearm is actually applying it to your daily life, routine, structure, kids, single yep. woman, single male, whatever. So yep. that's a, that was definitely yep. a class that would be beneficial for a lot of people. Yeah, it's trying. To, I'm trying to open the door, like you know, kind of you were talking about not taking a tactical class yes. in the last couple of years, and obviously that's a word that's been so yeah. bastardized yeah. in our world. Um, but tactics are decisions. Yes. Tactics are choices that yes. we. It's choice A or choice B, mm -hmm. right? Do we do we you know yeah. all that kind of stuff? Kind of choose your own adventure. And so many people practice only skills mm -hmm. and never practice tactics. Yes. Uh, in the right way, in the right context, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And a lot of my classes are there to not necessarily teach tactics, because that's not my that's not my lane necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, but to open people's I minds to the idea that that's actually what you need to end up getting to get yes. your skills, get your skills squared away, yeah. start to go to some more interactive forest on forest training, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Now, that's definitely a agreeable point. You know, everybody thinks tactics means the helmet and a plate carrier, and now you're and you with a gun. Now mm -hmm. you're teaching tactics. No, yeah. it's not. It's it's a you know. Choice A, choice B, mm -hmm. and the practical application of execution on both. Yep. And that's something that I don't yep. think a lot of people... How to seize the initiative. Yeah, exactly. How to use all the, the concealed carry tools yep. when those yep. tools should come out, the effects of them coming out in yep. an interaction. That's the tactics that actually apply to yeah. Joe Schmo not looking for trouble. 100%. I have a question. For your uh, edge weapons stuff you're doing, the Craig Dolphin yeah, stuff. Yeah, so I've, I've had an intro to knife defense class for a okay. while, and that's, again, a, trying to dip people's toe in the water. Okay. Um, that's not something that I, I've got other people that I recommend that yeah. a little bit more now on. Edge weapon stuff is also something that you get more weirdos in the knife world than you get yes. in the gun world, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so yeah. there, there's a big variance in the quality yes. of training for knife defense in the criminal context. Yeah. Um, so I've tried to, you know, kind of give people that idea that, hey, this may be what right looks like. Mm -hmm. And you can use that as your lens to look at future sure. training. Of, yeah. Is this something even worth 
looking at? Yeah. Or is it something that we should say, hey, that's, you know, Filipino knife fighting? No, 100%. And, you know, yeah. Stuff. I mean, you've seen it too. I mean, I think there's the guys who post Instagram, the pocket dump, he's got the pistol, the folding knife, the mm -hmm. fixed blade, mm -hmm. the tourniquet, you know, and the knuck or whatever. It's like, you know, I joke with the hashtag, don't get killed with your own shit. Yeah. You know, but you got two hands, you've got three things that can kill your ass. Yeah. It's like, you got to have an understanding of how those things apply. Oh, yeah. So. And it's, it's interesting because you were talking about, um, you know, people's backgrounds and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I always like seeing people's pedigree yeah. in our world because everybody's trained from somebody. Sure. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. I didn't invent mm -hmm. everything from yeah, new. I, I trained with the people that I wanted to train yeah. with and, and pursued this very intently um, to come up with something that I thought I could bring to the table. For sure. And like, you'll see people that, okay, that's a, that's a, a gun sight style instructor. Oh, 100%, you know, yeah. Or that's a, that's a, you know, name your other yeah. tactical guy in the industry instructor. Yeah, no, I, um, for me, kind of that, I would say the most out of all of my training is Craig Douglas of Shivworks. For sure. I've trained with him a yeah. lot. He's an OG um, and all that, gun and, and blade. I mean, and, but he sh kind of shows, you see in those classes, the more stuff you carry, the more stuff yes. you have to retain. Yep. When you're on your back yeah. getting rolled around in the dirt, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't carry a, a, a folding knife anymore. No, same. Uh, same. It's, it's not really useful as a defensive tool. And obviously, it's a great utility tool, but... You, again, you have to retain that. 100%. Uh, so I carry, you know, a gun and a blade, both forward of the points of the hips, uh, that I can retain both well. But I don't carry more lethal stuff than those two because that's all I can handle rolling around. You know, my people. folder is an, like an, literally an old timer sometimes or a spider co with no clip on it and it oh, goes yeah, into yeah, yeah. the pocket mm -hmm. it's not something that's clipped to my pocket so yep. more more know. protected yeah yep. it's just something that i'm eating lunch with or i'm opening a box with you yeah. know i'm not using that i have in my um uh bassinelli i have a pico mangalo fixed blade okay um and that's something i use in a horizontal carry you know, that's something that Craig's been promoting for years is yep. the horrible, with the clinch picks. Yep. So, I use my know. clinch pick as my utility knife. Okay. And people there might get mad at me yeah. for that. And it's like, you know what? The, the, it's, it's designed as a tool. The fanboys out there are probably going to send you some hate mail right now. Sure, so, sure. You know, how dare you? Yeah, yeah. So so you got classes coming up yeah. uh, this quarter. And then, so you got what coming? So let the guys know at yeah. home what you have coming. Then I got a question for you on one of the classes you used to offer. So. Sure. Yeah. So flag, so Pistol Foundations is our is our flagship course. I've got that on April 16th. I've got that on May 14th and June 4th. Uh, so once a month out into Q2 at the Farm Training Center in Fairfield, Utah. Um, so again, if you've taken a pistol class before, but you're looking to get a good foundation in training, that's the class for you. And then... Uh, Oh, sorry, sure. go ahead. I've also got uh, situational awareness concepts and home defense planning uh, once a month at TNT Guns and Range in Murray. I've also got my pistol basics class and, and concealed firearms permit class also at TNT Guns and Range. Uh, and some of those things are going to be expanding out here soon. So stay tuned on the website as well. Very cool. And then are you still doing the nice stuff? I know you were doing that for a minute. You I had talked about it. maybe kind yeah. of separating that from the business. Yeah, whatever. I was doing it for a little bit. If you don't know, I had a class called Intro to Knife Defense, uh, which was kind of opening people's eyes to maybe what maybe what right looks like on some of the foundations of knife defense for bad okay. guy, if you can still carry a knife, That's I would sure. use that to best, best effect. Uh, I don't do that anymore. Okay. I'm not an expert on it. No, I, it's I fair. recommend experts for that. No, it's, um, that's, a, that's but, a very high road to take in, in, in understanding what lane you're, yeah. you're in. So. And like, and, and you know, there's, there's a lot of weirdos yes. in the knife yes. world. Um, yes, so you kind of have very, to know who you're picking, and that yeah. was kind of the class design was getting people on the right path. And yeah. now that I've got good collaborators, I recommend them. Thanks for watching, guys. Chris is here. He's local. It's it's something you're. I'm hoping he's a down for it. I'm going to use Chris because it's we share a lot of the same thought process and a lot of things in regards to gear and whatnot. I'm going to have him kind of help me a little bit because I think sometimes for you guys at home watching and getting two different feedbacks, he's very cerebral and experienced. I'm more kind of just I'm maybe also a little really bit funny. Yeah, really well, funny. We'll, we'll see. He is a ginger, and you know how I feel about gingers. Why you gotta go there? Syndicate. So, that being said, until next time, guys, thanks for watching. We post these videos every week on gear that we manufacture, gear that we buy, people we have come to the show. Until next time, take care. So a lot of questions that are asked in the photography world is, is what camera do you shoot on? And a lot of photographers will refer back to, well, it's not really the camera that you shoot with, but rather how you use it. So I kind of wanted to relate that back to the 2A community and ask what, like, is it the gun that you shoot or is it how you shoot it? Uh, yeah, I mean, and that's, and that's a common question we mm -hmm. get and everyone wants to talk about gear and optimizing things and, and gear, you know, sure matters, but at the same time, the skills that you bring to that equipment is, vastly more important yeah. than small upgrades and widgets and accessories and all that kind of stuff. Um, so having a baseline of good skill is so, so, so critical. That way, 
no matter what you carry, yes. you have the confidence because you have the competence yes. that you can do well with it. Um, so definitely, it's it's the uh, it's the Indian, not the Arrow. Hundred percent. You know, I think, and that's something we could do as a future video. It's like mm -hmm. I did one uh, iPhone seven gun, seven mag dumps. Do you want? Are you gonna have me shoot B eights with a high point? No. Okay. Um, no. I, I, high points are I mean, kind of. good. I we only could. let a select tier group of shooters touch my high points. Okay. I have a several, and they're marked, laser engraved, mm -hmm. and all that. They're very special. Is that to like me, behind so. a paywall or something? You'll see. You'll see. So it's 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 different. But no, I think when you have a solid baseline fundamental skill set. Doesn't matter, single action, double action, uh, comp, no comp, light trigger, heavy trigger, whatever. Mm -hmm. Your grip stance, sight trigger, press is what's making this weapon do what it's meant to do, and you are the person who's making it do that. So mm -hmm. I don't, doesn't matter what Gucci thing you've got, low price, high price, it's you, the shooter, who's executing the fundamentals to get a result from that action. Exactly. So.